everybody, my name is Tanya and it's officially 2015. So it must be time for my December wrap up. So December turned out to be a really good reading month in a lot of respects. There were quite a few things that I didn't quite get to or didn't go so well that I was hoping but a lot of other stuff I got read and I'm really happy with the amount. So in December I managed to finish 13 books and also made progress on a few more and I'm really happy with that number. The first book I finished in December was my first Agatha Christie for the month and that is Murder is Easy. As I mentioned in my TBR video this isn't one of her usual detectives so there isn't, it's not a Hercule Poirot, it's not a Miss Marple. However there is a very small uh, cameo by Superintendent Battle in this one who pops up in some of her other works. So while it wasn't one of her main detectives there was a slight recurring character in here. This is one that I had never read before and as with everything Agatha I really enjoyed, I know you must be getting sick of me just saying that month in month out about my Agatha Christie picks, but basically she's wonderful, I love her and this was thoroughly enjoyable. The premise of this one is there is an elderly lady living in a small English town who believes that there is a mass murderer on the loose, somebody who's done multiple killings and she knows who's going to be killed next and she's on her way to Scotland Yard to tell them all about it because the local police will not listen to her. And on her way there she is run down in a run accident and is it a coincidence or was she onto something? And so this follows the character of Luke Fitzwilliam who decides he's going to go have a bit of a poke around and see what he can turn up and the events that befall from that point. I had my suspicions through it that of course turned out to be completely false although there were a couple of things that I picked up before the big denouement that I guessed correctly so I was pleased about that but my main thought throughout it was completely off track which is nothing new. The second book I completed in the month of December is something that I started in November and that was the audiobook of Watership Down by Richard Adams. I had started this one in November for Read Kids Lit. This is a story of a small group of rabbits who have to move from their warren and the struggles that they go through to try and find a new safe place for them to stay and while that sounds you know it's all about rabbits it is completely compelling and definitely get caught up in the storylines and with the rabbit characters in this and care about their welfare and I really did enjoy it. I'm so glad that I finally have ticked this off. The next book that I completed is something that I was years overdue for a reread and that is my next Agatha Christie pick for the month and then The Manan. And then The Manan is one of my all-time favourite Agatha Christie's. I can't pick an all-time favourite but this is definitely in the top three and this is just such a well-crafted story and it's very much more of a suspenseful kind of thriller than most of her other works or pretty much anything else that I've read at this stage. This one you get that real kind of sense of impending doom that happens. Basically the premise of this is a group of people are invited to a mysterious island and when they get there they find that things maybe are not as they were expecting and the story and the solution is just superb. I'll never forget it but reading it again and again it doesn't lose any of its impact completely caught up in the story as much as I have been any other times I've read this and I was so pleased to finally get to this one because it's just fantastic. Next up was the first book I completed for the 1001 books you must read before you die list and that was Mrs. Harris Goes to Paris by Paul Bagalico. This as I said is the uh, bind up of Mrs. Harris Goes to Paris and Mrs. Harris Goes to New York. At this stage I've only read Mrs. Harris Goes to Paris but I may yet move on and read Mrs. Harris Goes to New York because this was just so charming and so delightful. This is one of the more fuzzy picks from the list and was just a joy to read. This follows the story of Mrs. Harris, a rather rough around the edges London charwoman who has a dream to one day own a Dior dress and this follows her journey of trying to scrimp and save enough money to afford a Dior dress and she goes to Paris and what happens when she gets to the house of Dior there? As I said the storyline of this was utterly charming, it's a real quick little read and it definitely put a smile on my face. The next book I finished was also from the Thousand List but this time on audio and that was The Hours by Michael Cunningham. As I mentioned before, this was a uh, group read for the Thousand One group on Goodreads. Last month we read Mrs. Dalloway and then this month The Hours as a companion read. And I really, really enjoyed this. I definitely appreciated reading it so close to Mrs. Dalloway. I think not having read Mrs. Dalloway beforehand or having read Mrs. Dalloway a long time ago, you would miss a lot of the nuances and, and the significance of the storyline in this one. I definitely feel that it was a great companion read that it made sense to read them one after the other so you kind of really get the impact of the storyline in this. This 
parallels what happens in Mrs. Dalloway quite strongly in both themes and the plot. This follows the storylines of three different characters, one of which is Virginia Woolf as she is in the process of writing Mrs. Dalloway and then the other two uh, characters that Mrs. Dalloway has quite an impact on their lives. And the opening of this is one of the most beautiful but inevitable but horrible and so moving passages I was just completely numbed by it listening to it driving to work I really had a, a big effect and really set the tone for the whole novel for me the audiobook I listened to was narrated by the author himself, Michael Cunningham, and to start with I was kind of jarred by his voice, but that opening soon sucked me in and it didn't turn out to be an issue at all. The next book I finished was also an audiobook and was also on the thousand list and I chose it specifically because of its short length. And that was The Death of Ivan Illich by Leo Tolstoy. This was an, another audiobook that I got and it was only three hours long and I had a lot of driving to do one day. So I would get the three hours in in the day and I decided well why not let's tick another one off and then I know that I only have 1,000 book left to hit for the month. This book is about exactly what it sounds like it is the about the death of a man named Ivan Illich kind of we get a little glimpse of the aftermath of his death but also the days leading up to his death. It was definitely a very interesting little uh, story but it hasn't really stuck with me so much and that's possibly because I did rush through so quickly listening to it all in one day but I did enjoy it and I'm glad to have listened to it. The next three books I completed were during the Xmas Booktubeathon so I won't talk too much about them here because I did talk about them in my Booktubeathon wrap up that I will link down below but those books were 100 Cats Who Changed Civilization, my next Agatha Christie for the month The Regatta Mystery and then Rover Random by J.R. Tolkien which I got from my Booktube Secret Santa and I couldn't help but throw into my TBR for that. For the next audiobook that I listened to I went back to my audiobook jar and I drew out The Wasp Factory by Ian Banks. This was another quite short audiobook so I finished it quite quickly in a month. This is a book that's on the Thousand One Books You Must Read Before You Die so it was my last of the thousand books that I had to read for the year which I was really excited about. This was a really interesting story actually. I've read one of Ian Banks's sci-fi novels that he publishes under Ian M. Banks but I hadn't read any of his general fiction before. This is a novel that's set in Scotland in I think the 70s or 80s and it follows the character of Frank who is a 17 year old boy who's got a lot of issues and so him as the narrator was a really interesting thing because he throws in these little little things that you go did did he just say that did he seriously and I don't want to say <laughs> any of the stuff that he's done but he's a little bit messed up and so the premise of the story is that Eric Frank's older brother has escaped from the psychiatric hospital that he is a patient at Eric obviously also has a lot of issues and he has escaped from the hospital and he's making his way home to them. So all in all I really enjoyed this but I was a little bit let down by the ending but in general being inside Frank's head and the narrator that I listened to was excellent. The way he narrates Frank's thoughts and Frank's mind. I can't remember who the narrator was at the moment but I'll put it somewhere on the screen here but I think he did a fantastic job of narrating the story. Next up I finished this volume, A Christmas Carol and Other Christmas Writings and then also The Cricket on the Hearth for the Very Dickens Christmas Read Along organised by Sam at Novels and Nonsense. So Sam had picked out five different Dickens stories to read and some of those were in this volume but some of the stories in this weren't for the read along. I did read all of this volume from November to December and for the most part I really enjoyed it but there were a couple of stories, one in particular that I had a lot of trouble getting through and I got really bogged down and stalled in and that was The Haunted Man and the Ghost Bargain which was one of the ones for the read along and I didn't care for that one at all. I had a really hard time with it and that made it really hard to kind of move forward with this and I stalled for a long time. So in the end I did pretty much catch up for the read along. There is still one story that I didn't read and that is The Chimes. I'm possibly still going to pick it up at some point but the discussion has kind of gone past at this point so I'm not sure whether I am going to do it anytime soon. We'll just see what happens but I'm really pleased to have read everything in this collection. The thing that I was really really looking forward to for this was to finally listen to the audio version that I have of A Christmas Carol narrated by Tim Curry which I've had for a few years now and I just feel that he would be absolutely perfect to narrate this story and I did listen to it and I'm so pleased about that and yes he was perfect he did such a fantastic job narrating Scrooge and the ghosts and everything it was just a fantastic listen it only takes a few hours but it was very worthwhile 
And so the last book that I finished in December was my last Agatha Christie pick, and that was Sad Cypress. This, again, was another Hercule Poirot, and was fantastic. I was really caught up in the story of this one, really, really enjoyed it. So this one opens with a court scene, and Eleanor Carlyle is being charged with the murder of Mary Gerard. She is the only one who had an opportunity to administer the poison that killed Mary, and she's the only one who has a motive to kill her. But Hercule Poirot isn't convinced, and so he goes and he investigates the crime. Everything, everything that he comes across is still pointing that Eleanor has killed her, that Eleanor is the murderess, but it's completely compelling and you really have to wait to see did Eleanor do it or did she not? This was a fantastic note to end my year of Ag Christie reading. This was a first time read for me and just phenomenal. And so if you watched my December TBR video you'll notice that there are a few read-alongs that are missing from my wrap-up here. And I didn't go so well at the read-alongs this month. I did make some progress on things, but I didn't quite get finished. And so the first one of these was the group read for the booktube reading buddies this month, and that is Shadow of the Wind by Carlos Ruiz Afon. I got about 100 pages into this. It took me a while into the month to actually get started. I got 100 pages in and then I stalled. I made a little bit more progress. I am now on page 122, so really a little bit more progress. And there I have stalled. And I am still really interested to get to this. Just other things kind of took precedence and of course everything is busy in December and a lot of things are happening. And I just didn't get back to it. And I don't quite know what happened there. So I am definitely hoping to continue on with this in January and to get it read. And then the second read along that I was meant to be participating in in December was De Maurier December. And I had picked out to read My Cousin Rachel. Again, I just didn't get to picking this up until very late in the month. Because I had finished all of my thousand book quota, I decided that I would get the audiobook of this and start listening to the audiobook. I think maybe I got about five hours into the audiobook, but there's still a fair way to go, but I am loving it so far. And the narrator is doing a really fantastic job, so I'm so pleased I picked up the audio version. And while it's not tomorrow December so much, I'll be continuing it in January. And then one last thing that I started in December, but haven't finished yet, and that is Dream is Pulled by Juliet Merlier. Yes, I started it. I only started it yesterday, the 31st, but I started in December. I started in 2014 and that's all that counts. So I have started the audio version of this. I'm listening to the audio version. Uh, got around 50 minutes of it listened to in December, but I listened to another chunk today and I'm thoroughly enjoying it, completely loving it. Yet another fantastic Juliet Emilia. I'm really sucked into the story and I'm intrigued to see how it goes. So the only other book that was on my TBR that I didn't get to in December was Plasteralia by John Saunders. This is one that I had picked out for my thousand books that I had to reach for the end of the year. And because I covered that all with the audiobooks that I read, I didn't worry about picking this one up. So this will be something that I'll read for my thousand books sometime in 2015. Maybe in January, we'll just see what happens. There's no great rush, but I am intrigued after hearing about it on Ronald's channel. So I'll see how that goes, but I'm not worried that I didn't read this in December. So these are the things that I completed in December, plus the audiobooks The Death of Ivan Illich and The Wasp Factory, and also the Dickens novella Cricket on the Hearth. But otherwise, these are the books that I finished in December. So if you read any of the books that I read this month, let me know down in the comments. And if you have any questions about any of them, as always, thank you all for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye!